Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Vicious and welcome back to the second part of my two-part tutorial series on converting FLV video files over to a new format. So uh, if you're tuning in after the first one, the first one was talking about taking FLV and moving it into an MKV container. I did that one first because it was an easier process to help introduce you to this. Um, it was all graphic user interface programs that anybody can use by dragging and dropping files. The second tutorial, this one here with the MP4, is more complicated because the program we're using is command line run. Uh, and that's why I'm going to go a little bit slower and have to get in more detail. But real quick, before I even get into that, let me reiterate real quickly what's so special about these two tutorials. One, that we're not modifying the raw content of these video files. The audio and video file inside of this FLV container is being unmodified and we're remuxing it, as they call it, into a new container. So we're not losing any of the quality that's originally here. We're not actually converting it at all. We're just changing the container. That means no quality is lost and it's much faster because the computer is not going to have to process and encode anything. The other thing that's very special about these tutorials, uh, the first one and this one here, is that we're dealing with files that are from XSplit. These FLV files are variable frame rate. That means using pretty much any traditional method of unmuxing and remuxing these files, you're going to get audio and video out of sync because the audio and video don't run at the same pace without time codes. The um, time codes were easy to use with MKV, but this is the first and only method I've ever found to do this with MP4. All right, so watch the first one first. If you need more information on the variable frame rate and the time codes, that's why there's two parts. This one, we're just going to go ahead and get into it. What we need for this one is one program. It's called FFmpeg. We're going to go ahead and go to internet browser and go to Google and ffmpeg.org. If you go there and you go to downloads and I'm using windows. So I'm going to go down here to download the windows builds and 32 bit or 64 bit. Go ahead and choose whichever one's proper for your operating system. Get the static build just because it's easier. So I downloaded the latest 64 bit build and it's on my desktop already right here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and extract it and get myself a folder with all the stuff so here we go it's um, a readme some presets some licenses some documentation and then the bins here's the actual exes and this is what i mean no gui no graphic user interface if i was to double click the uh, exe you're just going to quickly see a command line window flash open and then close and that's usually a tall tale sign that you have to run this program via command line and that means you need to know the script and I already have that typed out for you. This is what we're going to be running for this particular project. FFmpeg exe is the program we're running. I is our input. Input.flv is the name of our file for input. C is for codec. We're going to be running this codec copy. We're not going to be specifying any codec to re-encode this video. We're just going to be copying the original streams. And here is the key ingredient that makes the uh, tutorial, what XSplit user has been looking for and needing forever. Copy TS means copy timestamps. And that is what's going to keep the audio and video in sync. And then output is the name of the output file. So that's how we're going to do it. Now, if you know anything about command line, these have to be the long paths to your files. This isn't going to do anything unless I specify where FFmpeg is. This will not work if I don't specify where the input file is. And this won't work unless I say exactly where I want this file to go. And that's why I'm going to make this tutorial easy uh, by showing you some tricks on how to shorten this up. And then I'm going to do like a small bonus tutorial later on to show you how to run this from a batch file, uh, a bat file. That way you can run uh, by double clicking on an icon and not typing this out and how to get your long path. So for today's tutorial, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and drag this into my folder where I have the video file I want to work with. And I'm going to move my video file into where the exe is at. So here I am with the exe and my video file. They're in the same location on my computer. That means when I run this program, I don't have to specify the path for this because they're in the same location. I'm going to rename this to give it an easy name. I'm just going to name it uh, tutorial. FLV. And here's my trick for the command line. I have to specify where FFmpeg is at on my computer. 
if I go back one folder and I hold down control and shift and I right click on my bin folder where that exe is under my options you're going to find open a command window here and if I click on that I'm going to get a nice command line window already with a path specified where the exe is and that will save us the whole trouble of having to find this path and type it out since the video file is already in here as well I don't have to specify the path for that so we're already ready to run that script I showed you so go back to that and show you what that was again I'm going to type in ffmpeg dash i for input the name is tutorial flv dash c for codec the codec is copy for both video and audio i'm not specifying audio or video so it's going to do both and then i'm going to flag copy timestamps and then the output i'll just call this why not call it tutorial again i'll call it mp4 tutorial.mp4 and as you can see here's the important part it's syncing all the timestamps to the frame rate and that's why when this is done in just a moment you're going to see that the audio and video are in sync this is a two hour long video file uh, my frame rate varied anywhere from 24 to 30 frames per second and there was no way to get the uh, audio and video in sync at a static frame rate using something like the average frame rate. It just wasn't going to happen. And unlike the MKV tutorial, now that I'm using an MP4 container, this file is editable in your average video editor like Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere. And I'll show you that as soon as we're done. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and get Vegas open while we're waiting. All right, Vegas is open, and we're just waiting for this to finish. And that's it, guys. Let me go ahead and minimize this, show what we got. I can close that out. Again, the tutorial I'm coming up with shortly as a bonus is I'm going to teach you guys how to find your long paths. Most of you probably know how, but I'm going to elaborate just in case you don't. And instead of having to run it from a command window like this, it's going to be a file, like a text file you just double click on, and it will run this. It's going to make it much easier for you if you do this process often. And it's going to make it easier for you to customize it for your own personal needs. It'll be much more in-depth on this portion of this tutorial. So back into here where we had the EXE, here's the FLV that we used for input, and here is the output, the MP4 file. It's the same size as originally. Nothing changed. No quality was lost, but now it's in an MP4 container, which works in Vegas. So FLV, if we try that, Vegas is going to spit out an error at us that says it does not recognize this format. I can't use that file. I hate you. Go away. If I try MP4, it will drag and drop right in. And you can see that the video and audio are the exact same length, completely in sync. And that, guys, is what everybody has been waiting for. There's finally a fix. Both tutorials are using 100% free programs. There's nothing to pay for, no gimmicks. I'm not making anything off of it. I'm not, so uh, basically, it's just sharing the knowledge. So if the knowledge was useful for you or you just enjoyed the tutorial for any other reason, be sure to say thank you by giving a thumbs up and liking the video. If you want to learn more things like this from a technological guy like me, just subscribe to my channel because I always have new stuff coming out. And other than that, I'm going to let you guys go. This was Vicious, and I'll see you next time.